Women who've done time. What was women's prison like? I got locked up in women's prison when I was 21. When you first get there they ask if you're addicted to anything. If you said benzos or alcohol, they dosed you up with 4 milligrams of clonop in a day. Anyone who's been there before knows this, so for the first 2 weeks when I was in the drug treatment area, for other things, I didn't know about the clonopin. Things were very chill. There was a few verbal fights, big kind of a camaraderie between the women like, we're all just addicts trying to get through this together. We had groups and AA. It was a daily thing for all, which was most except me, the women with children to break down crying about missing them and how they'd literally anything for their kids now that they're sober. You were in a trailer with two floors. There was rooms with four bunks in them and a community bathroom with individual showers. Lots of hooking up in the bathroom stalls and showers. Something really weird. Every few days they passed out electric shavers. There was one for each bunk and there would be a line of girls using these old shavers to dry shave their legs and pubes in the bathroom. Some of them would flip them and use the non-cutting side as a celeb corn cob on others. Freaking gross. I never even considered shaving. There was a microwave you could sometimes use and access to hot water to make noodles and coffee. They gave out stamps, paper and pens to write home if you asked and gave you pads. One roll of toilet paper, ghetto shampoo soap and toothbrush paste. During rec time you could walk around the compound, but there were also classes like yoga, AA, Zumba, gym, library, etc. After two weeks there I got moved to the maximum security part. Here you were in a high tech building with one bunk in each room and locked in for most of the day. Or else you could go in the community room and watch TV a few hours a day. No more access to hot water. Women who didn't pay a fine were locked up with baby killers. They were the most shunned. One baby killer got attacked because she asked for my oatmeal I wasn't eating. No more classes of any kind. You had to be there for over 5 years to be put in the trailers by where the drug program was. They even had dogs and could go to the library and pick out books instead of just picking from books left behind. I saw a girl almost done getting her face smashed into a metal door frame. Lots of fights. It really was awful. Keep going if you want to this was riveting. My mom went to prison when I was a junior in high school. She was innocent. The other people had more money and our lawyer was complete crap. Long story short she was in there for about a one, one stroke two years. There's a lot of girls who either are, or while in there tend to be lesbian. They're literally frisky all the time. I remember being 18 and visiting my mom and a few of the younger inmates had looked over at me a couple times and had given that BJ look with their tongue against their cheek. Another thing is cleanliness. A lot of things get missed. Inmates pretty much do most the work around the prison and my mom knew some people in the kitchen and they had been cleaning one day and figured they would open up the meat grinder because it hadn't been cleaned for a while. As they opened it they found about a million maggots inside it. Basically it hadn't been cleaned a lot longer than people thought, and the whole prison had been eating maggot meat. I worked in jail on women's units for a while. Had a girl come up to me and tell me the cologne I used, I hadn't worn it in 4 days. Not me but an ex's older sister got 3 DUIs and the last one meant she did a few weeks in jail. She was hot but in a trashy way. One of the first things she said she learned was how to make a prison corn cob out of a toilet paper roll, saran wrap, napkins and a rubber band. She said she didn't use one, but she said it was more sensual there than she expected. She's a fine member of society now, but just had a bit of a reckless stage. Still makes me chuckle thinking about that prison corn cob though. 3 DUIs. Reckless. Phew. Thank god. I was in a jail for non-violent offenders, not prison. It wasn't so bad, honestly. Each sleeping area had 3 bunk beds, 6 lockers, and a payphone. No doors. We got up at 6am and lined up for breakfast. Each room had to stay together. Technically order didn't matter, but the women who had been there a while liked to make sure everyone was always in the same spot. Probably help them feel like they some sort of control, I guess. Food was served on your basic cafeteria trays. Drinks were in these red plastic cups that reminded me of a toddler's learning cup. Things were pretty quiet for the most part. You weren't supposed to share food, but the guards were pretty lax. Most of the day was free time. There was a big living room type area with couches, chairs, and bookshelves. 
The book selection was horrendous, but most of them didn't bother to read. Outside time was pretty typical of what you'd see on TV. Just a concrete ground with a few basketball hoops. At night, they alternated between movies and church. The movies were regular. Mainstream movies. My bunkner yelled at me on my first morning because I put my glasses on her locker. The top of her locker was right next to my bed. Almost like an end table for me so I thought it'd be okay. But IT was not. She wasn't angry. But she was severe enough that I slept with my glasses on from then on out. We were allowed to wear casual clothes. But for some reason. I can't for the life of me remember why. I couldn't wear mine. So one girl let me borrow her nice pair of orange prison pants. She told me to be careful with them because they were the pair she reserved for wearing to court. One woman was always reading her horoscope, but a lot of the time she didn't understand what certain words meant, or didn't know how to pronounce them. Overall, it was pretty laid back and chill, but thinking of the women in there always depresses me. Mom was a corrections officer for a long time, so she worked in a jail not prison. She said there was a ton of drama and fricking in the women's unit compared to the men's. She referred to it as working with the B lol I miss my frickin' mom. As someone who spent time in jail, yes the same jail my mom worked at, I can tell you drama in the men's unit is usually at a 0 or a 10. The women's unit was probably more of a constant 6. The B just walked around like they were in a high school dorm ha ha. I am not a woman, and I haven't done time. But my mum did. It was before I was born. And though I never knew why she got locked up because she would never tell me. I think it was something to do with prostitution or breaking and entering. Though she was still naturally beautiful. Prison had done a lot of damage to her physically. She'd had her nose broken in multiple places. So it was really crooked and busted in. She would tell me how some of the bigger women in prison would try to physically eschew alter. Violate. I guess. But how. In her own words. And I loved this about her. That she would take the beatings of her life before she would let them do that to her. She was only a small woman. Not much over 5 feet 2 and was pretty skinny. But she had the heart of a giant. So I am sure she would have made it heck for anyone trying to take advantage of her like that. She passed away from a drink driving accident when I was 16. She was an alcoholic. And though she'd defeated Alat in her life. Alcohol was something she couldn't. So, woman's prison sounded like a rough place coming from her. I really miss her, and I wish I could have asked her more about it in the rest of her life before she had me. But no matter what, though she was a bit of an outcast to society, she was and will always be my hero. Love you mum. Hugs. I taught Ged Prep at a county house of correction for about 6 years. About halfway through I started splitting time between the men's and women's units. I agree with other posters that the drama was always at about a 6. Mostly about who was writing letters to whose man on the out. It made me sad how these women were so convinced that they needed a man to take care of them and would do anything to keep one. Even though it was usually their boyfriend who got them into drugs and prostitution in the first place. I really never got hit on. But the first time I was up there I tutored three women for about an hour. And as we were leaving the classroom one of them thanked me for working with them. Another lady said close the door a minute. I'll thank ya but it was just a laugh. I did hear some stories about the night shift. But who knows. I left kind of abruptly. A high school called and offered me a job. Pretty much the next day. As high schools tend to do. But I negotiated a week to transition. When I announced to my female students I was leaving. One of them just burst into tears. All in all, the women and men were just different. The men more jokey and the women more serious, interested in kids and family and such. Man, I feel really bad for that woman who cried. You must have been like the one ray of sunshine in her life for her to have a reaction like that. My mom has had a couple of stints in jail prison. I could always ask her if she'd be willing to do an AMA. She's definitely made some poor choices and served time for those choices and she isn't shy about it, especially if it were to be in a somewhat anonymous fashion such as Reddit. I bet there are quite many people who would like to attend that. Probably late to the party, but the best way I can describe it, is like a boarding school full of every type of female you can imagine. I spent about 2 months at a facility with around 400 women whose charges ranged from small petty crimes, 
to rape and murder. Everyone had their own cliches that they kept too, but there was a lot of stupid drama. Try to think of the most troubled girls from high school, and then imagine 400 of them stuck together, in a place that is miserable, where they are isolated from their family and the rest of society. That's basically the gist of it, but like any community, there are good people and bad people, and most of the time you can find a like-minded individual to make friends with. The facility I was at had a huge library, pretty good food, and cable TV, so I considered myself lucky in that aspect. I mostly kept to myself and read a lot, and I never got into any fights, and stayed out of trouble for the most part. Drugs and contraband still got in, a lot. That always made things interesting. I met some really strange people, and saw women who committed unspeakable crimes. It opened my eyes to a lot of things I had never seen before. Overall though, my time wasn't as bad as it could have been, and I learned some things, and hopefully I will never go back. A high school ex-girlfriend of mine went to ladder jail for prescription drugs. She said that all the inmates would bark at her when she walked by because she was the puppy of the pound. She got an improvised tattoo from a wood staple in a mechanical pencil, and apparently they have a lot of freedom there. We exchanged letters. You could get her to do a snail mail AMA, gather questions for her to answer and send back. It could be neat. My sis is in juvie and she's the only girl there. They are in separate areas, but she basically in solitary confinement. Says it sucks. I've been to jail twice. No prison though. Most people told me I didn't look like I belonged in jail. Gave me the WTF did you do to land here one of the male guards flirted with me about my tattoos. Mainly I just keep to myself until I got out though. I was the only blonde girl there when I went that got me a lot of attention. I had an ex and a good friend that were both locked up. Different times but in the same state. They both pretty much reported the same stuff. A lot of drugs. Had people offering them prescription pills immediately upon entry. A dearth of good books. And butthole guards. The ex didn't get undergarments for the first week she was there for literally no reason other than someone forgot to give her them at some point and they didn't want to admit to it. The friend is a strict, whole life, vegan and they wouldn't give her veggie meals, even though they're supposed to. She ended up having to eat only bread and apples the entire time she was there. Lost a ton of weight and still has digestive problems to this day. But mind you, both of these women were model prisoners. Scared white girls from middle class families that made straight as in school. Both went in for drug alcohol issues. And they still got treated like crap. I can only imagine what it must be like for the troublemakers. Mom went to prison for 2.5 to 3 years. I got to visit her roughly 1-2 times per month and a call like once a week for like 2 minutes. This is as best as I can describe her experience there at Lowell Correctional Institution from what she told me during visitation. Light side. She got to read a lot. She took a class in drafting. She got in the best shape she'd been in 12 years. Alcohol addiction was broken and she made a few friends. Dark side. Many times I visited her and she told me that girls she knew had died or killed others. She was once locked in solitary for a while just for witnessing a brawl. Sunlight is scarce and usually treasured. She hated count. The guards would frequently screw up count and so everyone would have to stand around for a long time until the guards figured it out. That's all I can remember at the moment. I'm a jail deputy who oversees women inmates as part of my daily assignments. I can answer any questions anyone has. I must caution that jail is not prison, but I can tell you about women inmates at my level if anyone is interested. I spent two months in a county jail, a couple times in different jails. I was very dumb in my early 20s, among my charges I was jailed for were a failure to appear in court for driving an unregistered vehicle. Long story, sharp lifting from fricking Claire's. Contempt of court for not paying fines for my possession of weed pipe charge. That was the longest stay at 59 days. Really the only way I could describe it was like living in a girls only low income area middle school. I personally found a few other white girls who were semi normal and in there for minor things like DUI. Underage drinking and one girl was super naive and was talked into writing out Q check to herself from her roommate's checkbook to pay bills. She was 19 and had never smoked a cigarette, or touched weed or alcohol. She was a sweetheart and told me everything there is to know about Johnny Depp. My first week or so there was rough, 
Oh was rooming with some pretty mean ghetto black chicks. I am 5 feet 0 100 pounds little white girl. One girl stole my butterfinger I bought with the tiny amount of commissary I had. So I confronted her and she tried to fight me. Even though I clearly saw the freaking wrapper in her bunk she denied taking it. Anyway, I told the guard I didn't feel safe in that room so she moved me in with the 19 year old. We actually ended up having a lot of fun. It was like a sleepover every night. Then some crazy M head girl moved in with us too. She was out of her mind, but entertaining nevertheless. I mostly just read lots of books, 28 total, and hung out with the few people I found to be normal there. I still talk to a few of them. Actually, it's definitely not a place I ever want to go again, but I'm glad I was able to find a few like-minded people and get through it. The worst part was that gap of time between dinner and breakfast, and when you don't have money for commissary it's tough watching everyone else eat their snacks. But my friends always shared with me. I spent a Monday through Friday in jail a couple weeks ago after some troubles from earlier this year. There's not a lot I can say about my time because I spent the whole week sitting in a cell by myself trying to go back to sleep. No one to talk to and no way to leave. It was just me in a room with a slot and the door for food. I didn't ask for anything or attempt to communicate with officers because I ultimately just wanted to be as inoffensive as possible and not cause any trouble. It was freezing cold, at least to someone who had zero physical movement, and there was no way to tell time. I counted breakfast and read, reread, reread again my paperwork stating how phone calls worked and when I'd get out. All in all I found it very draining. Mentally exhausting just trying to keep occupied while having zero stimulus. Jail food is not as bad as elementary school food was. The officer who released me seemed excited to have the good job that day where he's dealing with people who want to put their real clothes back on and gtfo. Technically I was in women's prison, though it was 5 days. So all I can comment on is the fact that the overcrowding thing can be real f. The cells held 2 bunkbs each. And the entire hallway was lined with extra bunkbs because it was over full. There's a whole lot of prison officers, 95% good and 5% bad reading these comments now. I'm one myself. Let me tell you, there is some crap that goes on in prison that you wouldn't believe. This type of crap is committed by the 5%. Please don't believe that every officer is corrupt, uncaring, indifferent. Last night I talked a prisoner out of a noose and his weapons with no violence from either party. But tonight when I checked up on him he asked for Panadol. Tylenol. I guess. And I didn't have any so he threatened to kill me and violate my wife and kids. This kind of crap and worse is what we as good officers put up with daily. So please, members of the public, if we seem a bit stressed, just remember what we do to keep you safe. Prisoners, if we seem preoccupied it's because we have huge castle loads. Sometimes hundreds of others and can't spend all our time dealing with you. I was a volunteer tutor at a juvenile detention center. The boys and girls were separated. The boys were pretty well behaved and polite. The girls program was shut down due to an incident. That happened over 5 years ago. The director of the program told us he tries not to remember what shut it down. But told us the boys are much easier to handle than the girls. He looked like a man who had seen some things. Man who has worked in various prisons here. I will take a men's over women's any day of the week. Shoots scary. Yay but why? I can tell you from my experience working at one that females are the most stressful inmates to deal with. They nag and be constantly and will get pleasure out of giving you a hard time in the most childish ways imaginable. It's even worse for the female employees. Bulls, they're all best friends. I saw orange is the new black. Liar. I spent a week in youth jail when I was 15. It wasn't too bad because majority of the girls went in for violent crimes. After 3 days I'd made friends with the rest of the girls and that worked to my advantage later. About 6 months before, I'd been hanging out with the wrong crowd and I was gang bashed by a group of 10-15ish girls for no reason other than I had become friends with one of their boyfriends. The main instigator later ended up in the same unit as me and my friends. For the rest of my time there they proceeded to bully and antagonize this girl. I felt kind of bad considering she looked so scared and lonely but I couldn't help but be a little bit happy she experienced a fraction of what I felt when I was attacked. One of my friends did time. 
She was in two different prisons. In one she had to work hoeing fields in a chain gang with guns pointed at her. In the other, she had prison guards bringing her subway and she worked at the store. She said there was a bull of there and it was easy. I spent 30 days in jail after drinking underage at 19 years of age, my first offense, but my mouth got my bond revoked so I sat there until my court date. It was horrible. The girls were beyond mean and hygiene in general was lacking. Ironically, my skin got really clear bc I had no makeup and I bathed as much as possible in there. The food was lukewarm garbage. We usually had cold grits and warm milk for breakfast, and bologna sandwiches on hard bread for lunch. I once traded a roll of toilet paper for a twin package of Dunkin Sticks. Guard snuck me Jolly Ranchers and Snickers bite sized candies BC they said it was BS that I was in there. Other guards had it out for me and would drag their flashlights along my cell bars to keep me up at night. It was too light, but I made a face mask out of a pad. We used newspaper as rollers for our hair to get ready for church. I wasn't in general population BC I talk too much crap, which was good BC I got to bathe separately from the other girls. Overall, it was heck. I was only in there for 30 days, but it felt like an eternity and it was shocking how quickly I acclimated to jail life. I wouldn't wish jail on my worst enemy. I'm not a woman and I have never been to prison, but I have seen orange as the new black. Evidently, it is a really difficult place to be for about one season, and after that, it's sort of like living at a boarding school with very lax acceptance policies. I worked in one for a few months. It was honestly like a reform school. The women there seemed like children that needed help. Women are very different creatures than men. They rely a lot on relationships and they are defined by their relationships. Many of the women formed relationships with one another, whether it was physical or romantic. Men in prison, when frustrated or sad or angry, would act out in violence. Women would cry or show their emotions in other less harmful ways. A lot of the inmates are non-violent. I had murderers clean my work area and take out my trash. It was a safe environment, but we, as staff, always had to be safe. They work for a living as well. A lot of them had a job, whether it was in the cafeteria, cleaning, gardening, etc. They could also take classes at the prison. If they didn't have their high school diploma, they were enrolled into a GED program. Some were working on their college degrees. It really wasn't anything special. Many people that worked there loved it over working at a men's prison. It's much calmer, according to them, and the inmates are a lot more respectful and genuine of the services offered to them. My dad used to work in a women's prison. He told me that most of the women there were really nice people. I can imagine women's prisons are mostly a lot less dangerous. My friend said they threaded their eyebrows with tampon strings. My sister was impregnated in jail. My best friend just got out of two years in county. I know a good bit already, but I could ask her to talk about it more if people are more interested. We're going to watch Oit NB together and she's going to tell me what's realistic and what isn't. County jail and federal prison are two completely different environments. Ex-cons of Reddit, what was the hardest prison habit to break after being released? Not me personally but I know a guy that said after he got out he just wanted McDonald's. When he got there he spent 20 minutes staring at the menu trying to decide what to order because he wasn't used to having choices. Staring at sharp things. Like there's no desire to use them inappropriately but you are just kinda shocked they're there and available for use. You might be surprised what qualifies as a sharp object. I remember whenever someone tried to hand me a knife or something to cut veggies it'd be afraid to touch it. Glass was the biggest thing though. Just mirrors in all the bathrooms. Real ones. I could smash that crap and have a big jagged weapon. I can't believe this Italian restaurant has such a dangerous thing in their bathroom. Stopping thinking of objects as weapons is hard. One of my foster sons came to us from juvie. Every meal his arm was around his plate and he woofed down his food. My mastiff couldn't keep up. He always ate back to the wall hunched. Took my wife and I a month to show him no one would take his food and we had plenty more. Funny part is he went in the marines and did 8 years got out honorable and is now working in corrections. I still like having a stash of ramen packs somewhere even if I'm not going to eat them. That's just smart. You never know when you might be hungry and have no other food. Taking a crap with my underwear up to my thighs to hide my junk. 
It took a long time to go back to pants around the ankles. I still do that. I forgot it wasn't normal until my girlfriend pointed it out. Not wearing shoes in the shower. Eating with forks and knives. Having salt and pepper for food. Not always having to watch your back. Being able to get food when you want it. And just get up and leave to go for a drive or something. I don't smoke. But every time someone offered me a cig I would pocket it. On the inside that's a buttering chip. Took me about a month or two to break. I eat fast. I don't sit with my back to the door in public. I always scan crowds constantly. I question why people are nice to me. I carry extra clothes, water, and various other things in my car in case I need it. Not a hoarder but harder to get rid of stuff. I don't like being away from home overnight. I also quit eating boiled eggs. I overseason my food, and I refuse to drink Kool-Aid anymore. Hoard feminine hygiene products. We were super limited on the number of pads or tampons they gave us. They didn't give any to the women in holding cells. There was dried and fresh menstrual blood on the floor and concrete benches, and a drain in the middle of the rooms like they intended to hose down the room, but if they did it was not often enough. I didn't use a fork for a few weeks, ate everything with a spoon without thinking. It's not the most interesting thing but I hadn't noticed it posted here. Same I tried to cut a steak with a spoon and my dad was like you are free now. Constantly looking over my shoulder, by far the hardest conditioning to break, which I haven't in doubt I ever will, is the constant pessimism and cautious optimism. You see, when you're waiting to work your way through court, get a deal, and get sentenced, you will have your dates changed 50 times. Hope for certain things only to be disappointed, and any time you are told something hopeful it doesn't work out. As a result, I never get excited for something until it actually happens. When my wife told me we were pregnant, I already knew from her symptoms that she was but still, you never know for sure till you take the test, I was obviously happy, but because I'm always cautiously optimistic and rarely show emotion, I couldn't feel comfortable or excited until I knew that my developing daughter was healthy. Even then, it didn't really hit me till she was born. You can apply this to anything especially big events. Getting engaged, planning the wedding, buying a house, anything. I still hear from my wife how I wasn't crazy surprised or excited to be having a kid. I was. I actually was the half of the relationship who was dead set on a kid when my wife supposedly could have gone either way. You just can't get your hopes up or look forward to anything until it is here or has happened. I've been home over 7 years now and with my wife for 6.5. She's truly the catalyst that motivated me to truly change my life and to not give any more of my life to the system. But she'll never know how happy she makes me because she misinterprets my cautious optimism realism for pessimism or indifference. I did almost 7 years, been out 2 years, there are multiple head counts where the guards make sure that all of the inmates are accounted for, every morning at 5am, I felt like I was doing something wrong if I slept past 5am, it took me almost 6 months before I slept past 5 o'clock, even now, 6am, is sleeping and for me, it has allowed me to never be late to work, and show up every day, I was a drug dealer with no work ethic, and I slept until noon. Ironically, I am more successful than I ever thought I would be because of this habit. I had to completely change my sense of time. I agree with all the people who said they ate super fast, but then we would slow walk back from the chow hall any excuse for a few minutes more outside. I made sure I never consolidated enjoyable things. If I had a snack I ate it and concentrated on it. If there was something good on TV, I watched it. Now, I'll snack while I watch a movie because there aren't enough hours in the day but on the inside I was trying to make hours and days go away. I've got a good job now, and nice respectable friends. But I still react to confrontational situations more quickly, decisively and efficiently than they do. I'm able to pull back at the last minute, but it's pretty clear that violence is not a tool in their arsenal. Taking as long as you want in the shower. For the longest time after I got out, I took less than 5 minute showers. I spent 72 months in prison for a tragic car accident that I had caused. After I was released I kept telling my wife exactly what I was doing without her asking. She thought it was funny at first but after a few weeks of it she was starting to get bothered. Not an ex-con but my stepdad has been in and out of prison for the majority of his life. 
He always said that whenever he gets out of prison you're so used to, to it being loud all the time that when he got home he couldn't sleep because it was so quiet. My friend who did a few years had to sleep with infomercials turned up quite loud just to get sleep at night. Always thought he was just accustomed to sleeping with the TV on. Now it makes sense. Dude I work with said for the first little bit after getting out he would take a leg out of his pants when he'd crap. Not sure how common that was. Dude's a fighter though, so maybe that had something to do with it. Not me, but guy who worked for me. When things were very busy, I would often get carry out lunch for everyone and bring it back to the workplace. This one guy would eat a cheeseburger and french fries in 2 minutes. Bro, once I asked him why he ate so quickly, he said well nobs fogger. I spent 7 years in a federal prison and if you didn't eat your meal in 10 minutes, you didn't get anything. That 10 minutes often included the time it took standing in line to get your food. Okay then. I never said anything to him about it after that. Being paranoid always looks over my shoulder and never letting anyone stand behind me. Even people passing on the side of me I'm always turning my head to see what they're doing food I could be the last one to eat first one done and I still stand when I eat around people. Doing laps. In prison. Every time you get time on the yard, you do laps. Seriously, almost every single person does it too. When you get out, it's hard to break that habit. Making prison commissary only food. Everyone around me thinks it is gross as heck to throw summer sausages, pickles, cheese, Doritos, Cheetos, and such into my ramen noodles. But good lord, I can't stop, and I have been out for 5 years. My ex would sleep a certain way all the time. To me it seemed like he was sleeping as if he was in a coffin. His arms crossed and wouldn't move the entire night for a couple months. He eventually broke that habit. I did that too when I was in. Not because I was afraid of getting up head, but because if someone came at me when I was sleeping, it was the best position to be able to defend yourself. I'm a stomach sleeper normally. A somewhat friend of mine did a few years and the one habit he couldn't shake was distrusting people. He said that people in prison are never nice. If they're nice it's because of a hidden motive. Up to this day he still doesn't trust people who act nice generous helpful dart. Towards him. The hardest thing has been to talk without using the words frick. Fricking or butthole in every sentence. Never been to prison. But I did a few months in county jail. Something I haven't seen mentioned is trading food. When I got out I asked my girlfriend to trade me her chicken wings for my McCorney. Pure habit. I really cold just went to the kitchen and got more chicken. My uncle was in prison for a while and we've talked a bit about his experience and how it affected him. He has a hard time not being violent. You'd never guess since he mainly just sits in a corner and smokes but he's been out for nearly 10 years and still always struggles with using his words. The guy cannot stand authority. He tells me that it's hard to listen to bosses when you know you're probably smarter and tougher than them. He knows most people feel this way, but he just can't ignore it. He's taken up professional carving so he can be his boss. He's really in touch with our native roots now, on account of joining a First Nations gang in prison. Doesn't talk much. I don't know if that's because of prison but he really only speaks if he wants to. Not the type of guy who likes to talk just to talk. Doesn't have a lot. He has some sort of abandonment issue or something so he doesn't want a lot of things to miss if he goes back to prison. For all the time he doesn't spend with people. He's out with nature or doing something in the wilderness. I think it helps keep him calm and feel connected. Nice enough guy, but prison kind of fricked him up I think and he's going to live his life being slightly disconnected with people. Not an ex-con, but judging by a few guys I've worked with, taking extreme offense at the word goof or goofy being used in their presence. It is apparently a prison term primarily in Canada that refers to child assault as killers, etc. In prison, you definitely don't want that name attached to you. Still. Pretty weird to have a dude blow up just because you said something they were working on looked a bit goofy and needed to be fixed. Having your head on a swivel, protecting your personal property in an obsessive manner, and sizing everyone up. When I was locked up, I always knew what was going on 360 degrees around me. Only the last unit I was in had lockers with actually locks. So before that, I had to protect my commie, paperwork and books all the time. Most people would fight you to take your crap because that is the respectful way to do it. Big cat burglars are the worst. 
they sneak around and take crap. They get fricked up by everyone when they get caught. It is code, you want my crap, come get it. Not sneaking around and steal it. I've been out for almost a year and a half but I still constantly size people up. No matter where it is, grocery store, Walmart, walking down the street, I still analyze each person and figure my best course of action if we have to fight. I've been out 8 years and I still eat like a dog. Most prisons give you 30 minutes for your meal but that includes the walk from your cell block to the chow hall, waiting in line and finding a seat. Normally by the time I actually get a piece of food in my mouth I've already got a CO yelling over my shoulder to hurry up. It's really annoying going out to eat with people and gobbling up your meal only to be stuck watching normal people eat for 20 minutes. Hardest habit? Talking crap to dumbass old men who think they're right cause they're old. Easiest habit? I'm never eating top ramen or getting a bowl cut from a Mexican barber again. I find myself hoarding toilet paper under my bed. Sometimes I do it without thinking and I'll look under there and have 10 rolls of TP. A couple guys I know after being out for 5-10 years wrap their arms around their plates and shovel food in their mouths at the speed of light. They are also super defensive of their food. When I first got to know them I jokingly swiped a chip off one of their plates and he flipped his fork up and demanded I give it back. Freaked me out a lil. My friend once told me he got hooked on watching news channels and crappy daytime television. He said he also enjoyed listening to AM radio now, even though he knows specific podcasts exist that are more tailored to him. He killed himself 3 years ago after getting a 20 year sentence just 1 year after getting out. I knew of a guy who got out after 15 years. He had to call a friend to come and let him out of his apartment. They'd go out, do some shopping or whatever and then his friend would lock him up for the night. Dude could not work doors himself without a rational fare. He did get better after a few months, but I hear he still has trouble doing things independently. When my dad got out of prison, 10 plus years we nicknamed him Martha Stewart because he was such a clean freak. His home looks like an Ikea catalog. He has glass containers for his shoes. He wakes up early to iron wash scrub everything. When I lived with him for a year, I was grounded so many times over leaving water drops in the sink. Two words. Grape. Jelly. I remember people literally fist fighting over jelly when I first got in. Realizing I can unlock my own door to go outside. Took me a while to realize that my roommates didn't have to unlock it to let me out. Pacing back and forth. Isolation. I used to be a social butterfly but after spending so much time keeping to myself I don't know how to socialize anymore. Not me but my best friend who spent 2 stroke 3 of her life locked up in juvie and prison. If she wanted a glass of water, she would ask permission. Also, if we were at my apartment and were gonna leave to go somewhere, she would stand behind the door and wait for me to open it. As if the door to my apartment was locked and only I had the keys. I was released at the end of November after 3 years, and my biggest adjustment is grocery shopping. In prison jail you typically can only go to the canteen once a week, and it isn't like just walking into your local grocery store, you have to write all your items down in advance, so if you forget something, you have to wait another week to get it, or if you're lucky, buy the item off another inmate. So it is still weird adjusting to being able to go and get groceries, hygiene items, etc. Whenever I need them. Definitely sleeping habits. Still haven't broke them. Haven't slept a full night in over a decade. Any noise and my eyes are open and I'm wide awake. I can hear really well. A raccoon comes nightly to eat scraps and cat food and I can hear him crunching outside on the porch from bed on the opposite side of the house. Roughly 60 feet away. Wide awake. I had to stop myself from knocking when getting up from a table. Explaining why this happens also really freaked my family out. An ex-con who works for me always asked to use the restroom. I have politely informed him that there is no need to do that. He's an adult and can use the restroom whenever he pleases. But he keeps asking and apologizing saying that it's hard to break the habit. He even told me it's hard to pee whenever he hasn't gotten permission. Out of fear he shouldn't be going in the first place. To get around this now he tells me I'm going to the bathroom, you might want someone to cover my station so I think we found a happy medium. Not being able to go to the free infirmary when sick or hurt. 
I got busted for weed and was confined in the county lockup for a couple months when I was 20. After I got out, for a year or more I dreamed every night that I was back in stir. That was the real punishment. X cons of reddit. What's the worst thing that happened to you whilst doing your time? Serious. My family came to visit me on Christmas day the first year I was in. I was so ashamed that I had a little breakdown the next day and punched the cinder block wall inside my cell. One of the guards invited me to come talk to him. I made the mistake of thinking he was a friend and was talking about the meaning of life and why things happened. He decided he thought I was suicidal, which I wasn't. The next day I was shipped off to a maximum security prison in the upper peninsula of Michigan. Stripped down naked and given a Kevlar smock to wear. They keep the temperature down at 60 degrees which means that you have to stay huddled in a corner to conserve body heat. Because this was observation I wasn't allowed to have anything. Nothing to read, watch, etc. Naked and cold for an entire week. If you'd like to see what this is like, turn your thermostat down. Then take all your clothes off and sleep on the floor of your bathroom with the light on for 6 days straight. No showering either. Wasn't offered a chance to clean myself. That's how I spent New Year's 2007. Observation is not some kind of psychological treatment. It's punishment and mental torture. Sleeping and singing to yourself is all you can do. Too cold to do anything else. Freaking brutal. Now I try to go out of the country for New Year's Eve every year. My cellmate put jam in my shoes the morning of my release. Oh and when I first got there they accidentally entered me into the system twice giving me two prisoner IDs only one of which worked and put all my money and post on the other one. Didn't sort this out till I finished my sentence months later. 12 months on the inside. Very first day in prison. Very first day. I was in line for supper and this big guy comes up behind me. Squeezes my ass and whispers in my ear are your panties wet. Scared I turned around, and the guy jumped back and said in a friendly tone oh my mistake mate thought you were someone else and left the line. I did 3, 1 stroke 2 years in Texas prisons. I believe that the worst story I can recall was my first full day in a state jail facility, used as a transition center for up to 2 years before one is sent to a real prison in Texas. A guy came up to me asking if I smoke cigarettes. I didn't but thought, why not? So he told me to head to the gym when that time came later that afternoon. We went to the gym and fired up a cigarette while we walked around the basketball court. As we were walking around the court, we approached the universal gym machine where a variety of people were using the various pieces to work out. The guy who offered me the cigarette advised me to follow him to the other side of the basketball court and to stay away from the universal gym. A few minutes later a guy sat down and leaned back to do some bench press when four guys grabbed him. One on each arm and one on each leg. The two other guys pull out cans of chili or refried beans as both were available. In socks and proceed to hammer the guy in the face. The guy at the bench press had his face completely caved in. All I could think was what have I gotten myself into. I also recall one other time when I was at the pre-release facility at the Beto unit where a guy had his face cut up with a box cutter and his throat slit over $20. The guy who died even had about $40 worth of cigarettes on him when he died. I never had anything happen to me directly per se. There were a few fights I got into over various things, usually just respect. At first I thought that didn't sound so bad. Then I realized that the chili was still in the cans. Processing into LA County Jail, just after the first showers, everybody is lined up to proceed to the next stage of processing. We were told to leave our towels in a pile on the floor and step forward when your name is called. One Hispanic fellow was called but did not speak any English. He was still carrying his towel. The deputy commanded him to stop and leave his towel in the pile. He did not respond. One deputy used his taser on the dude while two others dropped knees on him. The guy was rolling on the floor screaming apologies in broken English and Spanish. The guy received one warning. A few of us tried asking other Hispanics to inform him of the rule before he got to the deputies. But no further effort was made. I realize this isn't the worst tale on this post. Just goes to show that violence happens for totally silly reasons in jail prison. The funny thing is, there is no law in the entire United States mandating a citizen to know English. There is, however, a law that mandates any formal documents to be translated into any given language when requested. I saw a guy with swastika tattoos on his body befriend a flamboyantly gay, black man, platonically, 
turned my whole world upside down. Actually, for all I know it could have been a flamboyantly black, gay man. Either way, it was sweet. While waiting in jail to go to the PDC there were 5 guys from my block that liked making people fight. They made up stories and stole things then would act like your buddy and say they found your stuff in this guy's bunk. I was warned about this. They finally targeted me and this guy twice my size. Luckily he was warned too. They stole my deodorant which is a prize where I was and put it in his bunk. They told me where it was and I acted mad. Then we all went to his cell. The big guy looked at me and I said you stole from me. No one steals from me I winked at him and begin lightly slapping him. He laughed and slapped lightly back. We both were yelling. Everyone laughed and I got my deodorant back. The 5 dudes saw we knew what they were up to and moved on to other new inmates. Even though everything worked out I was secretly pooping and wetting myself to oblivion in my mind. I can answer as an ex-corrections officer. I was 4. 1 stroke 2 years in Cofill unit in Texas. I think the worst thing I ever saw was a guy who was masturbating with a light bulb. One of those little screw in 60 watt light bulbs. Anyway the guy stuck it up his ass. Glass end first and couldn't get it out. He asked the guards to take him to medical and I was on the escort team. He was in segregation. We get to medical and sit for a while next thing I know the guy is screaming blood and crap run everywhere and he just passes out. We ended up having to life flight him out to the closest hospital where they opened him up and rinsed his ass out. I was in the room the whole time. I'm still traumatized. Did 3 weeks in county for basically being at the wrong place at the wrong time. I had just turned 18 and had never been in trouble not even in school. I was interrogated in a small room by a huge undercover agent, with a stash, who told me that they knew I was the ringleader and that he would make it his personal mission to see that I spent the rest of my life in jail. Did not know any details so I said nothing. When I was put in a cell my cellmate was a 6 feet 2 bald Mexican gangster guy and every night he would loudly masturbate while I clinched my thin bedsheets in fear not sleeping until I knew for sure I no longer heard him. I was released for lack of evidence. Good times. Smart move not talking. Always call a lawyer always. Doesn't matter if they have nothing on you. Lawyer up. Anything you say they can use against you without context. Some interrogation techniques are brutal. I am going to give you a family story. My cousin got into some C&H problems shortly after his mother died. He did a robbery at knife point on a local shop where my brother now works. Anyway he goes away for 10 years, serves 8 and was released 3 years ago. He has a wife and 2 kids and is doing really well so happy ending. The story that comes to mind. During his 5th year he is one of the longest serving members of the prison. Short stay prison in England with only a few people serving sentences over 2 years anyway. He gets a guy living next to his cell and starts chatting with him in the cafeteria they become friends and after about 3 months people think nothing of it. But 3 months after he arrives the inmates break into the back office of the prison and find everyone's records. They find out my cousin's mate has been transferred to this prison because his last prison found out he was a kitty fiddler and he was moved for his safety. My cousin gets told flat out while at dinner one day so and so. He's been done for kitty fiddling. Do something or you both get it from us fearing his safety my cousin goes over and whacks the guy straight in the jaw with a tray. Breaks his jaw and a couple of teeth. My cousin proves he was not sympathizing with a pedo and didn't get his head kicked in. Sent into solitary confinement for a two weeks. I was arrested in a different state after skipping out of my home state. While waiting for extradition back they don't frick around. County maximum security. I'm in with the worst of the worst. All murder. Ah. Kidnapping charges. So my only experience with jail prior to this was watching the Shawshank Redemption. Oz. Prison shows on TV. So I'm scared shitless. I'm a big guy, at the time 6 feet 6 about 280 pounds, pretty solid fighter, but I know I'm in with hardened criminals that will kill me for a cupcake, or so I thought, anyway, first day in I stay in my cell, sleep all day, think about my life, halfway through the day a group of the biggest guys come in and ask for my papers to make sure I wasn't a pedo, later I talk to my cellmate a bit and he seems nice, says he needs a spades partner and I know how to play. He says the next day we will play and he will show me around. Next morning we sleep in and around 11 go down and get a game. I'm like a scared rabbit looking around checking my back just waiting to get shanked. 
We get to playing and I'm getting to know the guys. Everyone seems cool. I'm good at spades and so is my celly so we are kicking ass. After a few games the other team is getting agitated and I'm gloating a bit. So the guy to my right eventually gets upset and starts yelling calling me a cheat and this and that. I brush it off but I'm on full alert just waiting for a fight. So when he yells frick this and frick you. He stands up and I pop up and blast him in the face as hard as I can. He crumples to the ground and starts spitting out teeth. Everyone in the common area just stares at me like WTF. It was later explained that people get upset at card games but never fight in view of gourds. As someone who is about to do a few months for the first time this really takes some of the nerves away. It'll be in minimum security though so hopefully it will be even more chill than what you described. I wouldn't mind hearing that beat to death story either. 8 months inside and one instance always sticks out in my mind. I was running out of phone minutes and spending what precious time I had left talking to my child. We didn't get to talk as much as I liked. Had unfortunately more important people to talk to, lawyers, trying to find jobs for my release etc. This butthole comes up I need the phone. Hold on man, I only got a couple minutes left. He takes the phone and slammed it into the payphone holster and abruptly hung up on my daughter. Still breaks my heart because I cherish every minute I can have with her. I spent a short amount of time in a county jail. The first morning they came and handed out those small cardboard cereal boxes that come in variety packs. I remember wolfing down the cereal as I hadn't eaten in a day or two and was starving. They then came back around and served the milk. I'm sure this really sucked at the time and I'm sorry for your suffering, but goddamn it that was funny. I was incarcerated for 9 years 1 month 4 days. I've seen many things. I just turned 30. I will start a AMA when I have time. The worst I've seen was two guys on life sentences back in courts for retrial seeing a rival enemy and for DUI over the weekend. Guy didn't make it home. Two lifers stabbed him I'm assuming 100 times tied him up in blankets sent to trash delivery. Two guys were caught day later when missing body was found before trash was disposed. That's the problem with lifers. Nothing to lose. Almost a huge fight between 3 Vietnam vets and a 25 year old M dealer because he switched from the history channel to that week's new Breaking Bad during our precious TV time. That was my first time watching the show and he made the right call. M dealer stays true. Boredom. Seriously. Prison ice and like in the movies. Their stories of R and the like but never saw it. I got into a few fights. Got thrown in the box a couple times. By nothing compares to the goddamn boredom. My dad was released from prison 2013. I didn't visit him very often because I was 16 when he left and was very hurt but we've had a lot of conversations about what happened while he was in there. He tells me over and over that the worst thing for him while he was in there was the isolation. While he was in there I was arrested and later went to rehab. My brother was in two DUIs and nearly died. My mother served him divorce papers almost as soon as he got in there. As a hopeful future father and husband I cannot imagine a worse scenario. You literally have to sit around while the people you care about the most fade from view. Slowly every day you wonder if they're thinking about you and if they still love you the way you love them. You have to wonder what they're going to be like when you get out in years. You see your family is broken hearted and you can't reach out to them. Not only because they won't let you, but because you physically cannot leave. Boredom. I can't go 10 minutes without doing something or else I get extraordinarily bored. I can't imagine going years with no form of entertainment. I did 10 years in federal maximum joints. Saw lots of crap. Worst thing. During a riot some guy got his face beaten off of his skull with clubs. Inmates had broken the legs of some tables and taped three former Sterlock padlocks around the end. Dude had no face. Blood everywhere. Only one person died in that riot. Serious, ex-prisoners of Reddit, who was the most evil person there, and what did they do that was so bad? My mom was locked up with Selena's murderer, and we all know what she did. Every Mexican woman wanted to kill her so they kept her away from everyone. Not in prison but I was an intern in a public defender's office over 10 years ago and the one that stands out was a juvenile locked up for the third time for arping kids aged 2 to 4. Kid was obese and clearly very damaged, 
This was a juvenile detention center that was often used as a babysitter by cokehead moms, accuse the kid of a crime and get them locked up for the weekend so they could go on a bender. He was serving a sentence. I was warned going in there that he could turn violent at the drop of a hat and the attorney was nervous about bringing a young female in but I insisted. The kid looks me straight in the eye and says don't let me out. I will do it again. I can't stop. He was hunched over, dead eyes and completely serious. At least he knows and is being honest about it. I'm glad he's making the effort to keep himself locked up. That's got to be the skinniest sliver of a silver lining ever. I'm here. I did 5 years in Leicester and Featherstone Priscilla NS in the early 80s. One guy in Featherstone was a lifer and had done 30 plus years. Apparently he used to frick young boys and cut their dongs off. When he was arrested he had a fresh dong in his pocket. Too bad the police didn't get there sooner for the owner of the fresh dong. One of the women on my wing cut up her lover and put his body parts in her empty TV box. Then put the TV box on his mother's doorstep. Not sure about most evil but interesting story. When I did time I was bunked up with a guy who had stabbed his uncle to death. Guy was insanely mean but when lockup came, he was super nice to me. He was 23 but couldn't read or write so we would dictate letters to his girlfriend and I would write them for him. When my dad went to jail he was shocked by how many young men couldn't read or write. He made a lot of important friends because he was one of the few people able to help with legal paperwork. The words I shot that be in the stomach and I hope they both die were used in reference to a 15 year old pregnant girl. I won't ever be able to forget that one. English guy here. I spent four and a half months in prison in 2018. There was a guy who was really nice. Seemed like a genuine guy. That was until I found out he strangled his drunk wife to death and left her there whilst he went to work the next morning. There was also this dude in his 40s. This was when I was at the county jail, before being shipped off to state prison, who was a janitor at an elementary school. He was weird with a giant star of David tattoo on his back and blonde highlights in his longish bowl cut black hair. He sodomized two girls, 9 and 11 with a broom handle. I think his charge was sodomy with a foreign object. I remember everyone feeling contempt because we knew that in that county, sex offenders got off easy. Fortunately, we were wrong. He was given life. I remember the paper he got from court read. Release date. Deceased. There was another chomo who uped his 3 year old daughter and when his wife caught him, she freaked out and called the police. He ran from the cops in a car and drove off a cliffside. Whether that was on purpose or not I'm not sure. But here is where it gets worse. So after the accident, he couldn't talk or act normal. He was essentially retarded, would shuffle around and rock back and forth any time someone talked to him. But brain damage is what people said, from the car crash. People were nice to him until they found out his charge, then ignored him or were cold towards him but he was retarded at this point so no one went out of their way to harm him. This went on for maybe 7 or 8 months, but people started to say he was full of crap because gradually he started acting more normal or people would catch him acting more normal than they believed he tried to portray himself. Eventually, it became obvious. He could not keep up the charade any longer and everyone knew he was faking being retarded. People started freaking with him and tormenting him. People peed on his laundry bag. Trustees banging their brooms on the side of his cell wall to make him start going crazy and crying. He had a single cell in the corner. He was still trying to act like he was retarded but was slipping up and slacking at times and it became obvious he was full of crap. The worst part is that he only got 4 years. 4 freaking years for arping his daughter. I got 6 years for robbing someone of their drugs. Anyways, when he got to state prison after being shipped from the county jail, he got beat real frickin' bad. Word travels in the system. I think he spent the remainder of his time in isolation. Even the guards hated him and knew he was lying. Before I got my prison sentence in 2013 I was in Arapahoe County Jail with James Holmes. Was pretty crazy cause they'd put the whole facility on lockdown to move him. Even though he was in segregation. 12 life sentences plus an additional 3318 years for that guy. But deserves it. There was a correctional officer at least 6 feet 5 and well built and he would always come in peed off. So one morning we are waiting in line for breakfast and he thought he heard this older man call him a bee. He followed the man back to his cell and started teeing off on him. 
The man didn't even try fighting back and when he fell the first time he split his head open on the steel bunk. The inmate was so out of it he started asking where his car keys and wallet went while he was on the ground bleeding. The CO hears the man and for some reason turns around and goes back and hits him a few more times and says who's a bee now. I'll never forget thinking dang this is somebody's father. They're probably both somebody's father. I am 20 was in and out juvie from 15-18 till I went to county jail. The worst people I came into contact was a boy 15 who shot his stepmother, slit her throat, beat her head in with a blunt object, wrapped her in sheets for the father's roommate to find her then he shot him. Happened in McMinnville, Oregon. Other than that a lot of people are ping siblings and making threats to shoot up the high schools in the area. That's Yamhill County for you. I was locked up with Jody Arias, so that was bizarre. There was also a woman who murdered her baby and kept it in the freezer. We called her Maytag. I was 16 but tried as an adult so they kept me in a 21 and under pod. Malvo, the DC sniper was in my pod. Also one of the first people I saw in a chain gang was Charles Manson's brother. Swastika on his forehead and everything. Lesson learned. Don't be a frick boy. I was in JDC not doc but most of the people in JDC were locked up for the same reason as some people would be in doc. I remember talking to this kid and he was kind of stupid in the head. I asked him what he did and he up had his 10 year old sister while she was asleep. Most of them were in there for murder but he stood out since he was a sex offender. I was in a women's prison. New inmate told everyone she was in for tax fraud. Couple of days later, she gets a crap beating out of her and doesn't leave her cell again. Food gets taken in by screws, and eventually she gets ghosted out. Turns out she was in our side and both her husband and son were in the male side for running a child pee ring. Those guys had been put straight in the VP wing but most female prisons don't have enough sex offenders to have one. It was one of the screws who told some of the inmates why she was in, they wanted her to be taught a lesson. The offenses were awful. She was fully part of it and was responsible for acquiring a lot of the victims she was trusted by people. The youngest victim was her niece's 3 month old who had to be hospitalized due to trauma. This rich kid stabbed his friend in the chest, killing him. But he was on Xanax and weed at the time and doesn't remember anything of it other than his friend on the floor dying. The mad thing is this guy, 18 years old, actually got off with a murder and found not guilty although was sent down for just under 2 years for possession of a knife. His parents were quite wealthy and it was a big case in the UK. Basically his barristers were the best money could buy and he said that's how he got off. I was incarcerated with over 280 people doing life without parole. There were all kinds stabbed the neighbor lady 150 plus times, shot a bully in the head in the school parking lot, beat a dude with a hammer, etc. There were two that stuck with me though one where he looked me right in the eye and told me about shooting a guy with a shotgun to the chest, creeped me the f out, weirdo that kidnapped and killed some girl in his basement was another, John Wayne Gacy actually designed the miniature golf course there. I had a celly in prison who was a KKK white boy. He was a madman. He was always peed off and would say the craziest stuff like did you hear that? The white rhino is going extinct. Freaking Jews. I was watching the movie about black pilots in World War 2 and he sat down indignant and rolled his eyes and guffawed. Black pilots. See Monday I said you really think there are no black pilots he said heck no. Have you ever seen a black pilot it was like this every day until my move finally got approved. When I was in jail my celly was a guy that tied his old lady down to their table and tried to carve do not resuscitate into her chest. Halfway through the cops showed up because the neighbors could hear her screaming. I tried as politely as I could to tell the captain that I don't mess around with woman beaters and asked for a block transfer. Thankfully they put me in work release which was awesome because I got to work in the kitchen and deliver food to the different blocks. No food hall meals were brought to you and you never left your block except to go to the basketball city or the library. Well one day I'm serving food to one of the solitary cells and as soon as the slot is opened adventuring wet magazine gets thrown out. Turns out it's covered in pee and the woman inside is the chick my previous celly carved up. Turns out she stabbed her son with a syringe of her blood and she was inside too. Some crazy stories all around but that couple far and away we're the craziest people I saw. My friend's dad was a volunteer chaplain, taking care of prisoners' religious needs. 
At the county jail, he came into our criminal justice class to talk about working at a jail. He told us that the most evil people at a jail are the ones that show no remorse for their actions. He saw the guy that killed the foreign exchange student that attended the University of Utah and he told us that the guy didn't seem to care at all. He was calm about everything. Heard a story that some inmates would put broken glass in their fesses and throw it at CO's faces. So when they would wipe the stuff away from their eyes, the glass cuts them. Yup, they mix it with urine as well so as to make it a fine mist. Often it will be allowed to ferment for an extended period of time to make it as putrid as possible. It's called gassing and it's became such a problem in American prisons that they made it a felony. I wasn't an inmate, I was an officer, but at a facility I worked at we were a level 5 which is maximum security. Lots of people who had life without parole and just a bunch of different things happened. One guy was on a documentary because he traveled across several states and killed around 5 people total. He was peed cause the documentary blamed him but he always tried to say his father hitting him as a child made him kill these people. Then there's the old guy who uphead his young grandchildren and was furious that he was sent to prison cause they were his grandkids so he could do whatever he wanted. He had also uphead his children when they were growing up. Lots of sick things in a max security prison and those would be nothing when compared to a federal supermax. During my time in healthcare there was a security officer that looked like a skinhead but he was not. He was huge like 6 feet 5 around 370 pounds. Tattoos covered his body but they were only just noticeable because he wore full length shirts with collars. I got to know him and found out he was a retired correctional officer. He worked more than 20 years. He shared some crazy stories. He talked of outright unbelievable stuff but of all the things, this the one of the most horrendous inmates he spoke of. He was a corrections officer in Texas and was over the death row inmates. He said this one was there for kidnapping a mother and her two daughters. After arping and killing them, he drove them out to the desert to drop their bodies off. One of the girls somehow survived and made it back to the road where a trucker found her. I'm pretty sure they already executed this guy and on the day of his execution, this security officer at the time telling me this, told the guy I'm going to go home and have a great meal and think of you dying. Ah, there's different degrees to evil. One of the smallest black guys and there was so loud and would not stop talking. He eventually freaked out and cut his body up with a razor blade to get medical attention for a different scene. Another guy was young, got beat by a 70 year old in dominoes. The young guy just straight punched the old man in the forehead. I was reading Molly and me, and it just sounded like someone hit a watermelon super hard. I looked up, old man was knocked out on the floor. When he came to, these other 18 years old kids were cracking up laughing and the old man was so confused and kept asking why are you laughing? A white guy who was small and young was the Jack Russell Terrier of the pod, and he was the worst. He would just constantly steal and for some reason nobody did anything about it. Guy named Nick looked just like Mike Tyson and would fight white PPL who would work out BC they were doing it wrong. He would also stare at you while you were taking a crap. There was one corrections officer who assaulted me in a bathroom during work duty BC I didn't know if a roll of toilet paper should be changed out. There was like a 1 stroke 3 left. It was my first day. He thought I was fricking with him. After he hit me and was done. I said so, does it need to be changed I still don't know. He figured out I was serious and apologized. One CEO always snuck me coffee and let me watch football on TV BC I was nice and worked hard. <laughs> Hands down. So this lady was married. Husband cheated. Had a full blown affair. Ended up with a love child. Somewhere along the line the wife is babysitting the husband's illegitimate child. He comes home from work. Sitting down to eat dinner and asks her how is the baby? She says I don't know. You tell me? This bee ended up killing the baby, cooking it, putting it in the food and fed it to him. She's doing two life sentences. This is in Arizona by the way. Side note, she looks like the devil. Her eyes are literally black and she looks like she has no soul. It takes a lot to creep me out, but this lady's vibe is def one of the darkest things I've ever felt in my entire life. I've not been in jail so don't know if this will count, but when I was 19 I was a prison visitor. The one guy I visited was in jail for theft. He'd pick up high value items and just walk out of a store. Think 10 pounds K electronics from Harrods, 
and did it repeatedly. I asked him why he did it so much as he was not much older than me and had been in and out of jails since he was about 15. His answer. He was attracted to young children and wanted to make sure he could never act on those feelings. His doctor told him. He told me. Anyway. That it wasn't an issue because my friend told his doctor he would never act on those feelings and never got him any help he'd asked for. Now. I can guess what a lot of you are thinking. Yeah right. But he told me about his own childhood. And every word was verified later on. Both his parents had been sexually abusing him for as long as he could remember. Passed him around their disgusting friends to use as they wanted along with other children at parties etc. Just over a year of visiting him and he hung himself. Because he was going to be released and didn't want to be outside in case he did abuse some other child. And left a message saying he wanted to be sure he'd never hurt anyone the way he was. I miss him still and was proud of him. And to call him my friend. I worked in corrections and had an inmate beg for chemical castration because he was a pedo and didn't want to hurt anyone ever again. The state refused his request so he cut his balls off and flushed them. He never regretted doing it either. I know this doesn't fit the question 100%, but I'll chip in. I was a juror, never been in jail prison, on a high profile murder case a couple years ago. The man was charged with conspiracy to commit murder. We found him not guilty. Long story, as it was his girlfriend that actually committed the crime. This wasn't just any typical murder though. This guy's girlfriend faked a pregnancy, and when it was time to deliver, she lured a pregnant neighbor girl over to her apartment, killed her, and cut the baby out, intending to raise it as their own. The state got the woman to testify against her boyfriend at trial. So I can probably say that was the only time I've ever been in the same room as someone that is evil. You've been visited by the all-seeing dog as good visions will come to you but only if you comment watch me puppers. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.